Jesus. Come and put your hands together for Jesus. You are good. 
Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shall we pray? Life changer. Miracle worker. Life changing. Oh, 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 God of Just go ahead and worship this covenant keeping God. Let's bless His name. The one that can never fail. The one that watched over us while we slept. And woke us up this morning. To cause us to come to His presence. Let's worship Him. Let's call him by his redemptive names. He is our deliverer. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our strength. He is our defender. Our shield and our buckler. There's none like the God of heaven and earth. Bless him. Honor him. Adore him, worship him. He's worthy of our praise. No one can save like him. No one can bless like him. No one can father us like him. He deserves our worship. He's a covenant keeping God. He has never failed. He will not fail you today. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. Almighty Father, we worship you. The God that has no beginning of days, no end of days, you are the Almighty. The one that doeth wondrous things. The one who alone reigns forever. You are the captain of our salvation. We bow to worship you. Only you knew about today. And you have brought us into this day you knew ahead of time. Thank you for our glorious destiny in your hands. Only you can encounter a man and he will never remain the same again. We ask, oh God, this morning, encounter us, oh God. Save souls this morning. Heal the sick this morning. Do miracles. Too numerous to number. And let none that have appeared before you Go back empty-handed. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, mighty Father. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. If you're expectant, 
to have a divine encounter this morning with the Lord. I want you to put those hands better for the Lord himself. Hallelujah. The topic before us this morning for this divine encounter is better things for you. Better things for you. That's the title. And I want to thank our parents and the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Gio, for this uncommon privilege, uncommon opportunity to stand on their behalf to deliver the message to the people whom he has sent this message to. I don't know how many of us are of such people here, but I know if you are one of us that the Lord has sent message to, or is sending the message to this morning, I want the Lord to hear your shout of hallelujah and say unto the Lord, I am here. Shout hallelujah and say, I am here, O Lord. You will certainly get something better today in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9 to 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9 to 12. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak, time. For God is not unrighteous, to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Twelve and the last. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. May the Lord bless the reading of this scripture in Jesus' name. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 1. He said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. As many of us who have been following our Father in the Lord in this divine encounter program, as he has been following the Lord by faith and patience, we shall all inherit the promises in Jesus' name. And today is somebody's day for this inheritance. If you are the one, shout a loud amen. The passage we read in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 9 to 12. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 9 to 12 was assuring the Hebrew brethren of better things for them. And those things were particularly things that accompany salvation. So the writer of Hebrews was assuring them of the better things that were to come. Today, 
I am here by the backing of our Father in the Lord to assure somebody that something better is going to be delivered to you. Something better is coming to you in the name of Jesus. It's coming to you as an appointment later. Let your amen be loud and clear. Let the devil know that you are sure of what you are saying amen for. <laughs> what is coming to me is coming as a scholarship. It's coming as a visa. Are you a student? Get ready. It's coming. What is coming to you today is coming as a promotion. May I assure you, what is coming today, that better thing that is coming to you, is coming as an answer to your prayers. Are you single? What is coming to you today is coming to you as a wedding bell notice. Praise the Lord. Finally, there is somebody here. What is coming to you is coming to you as healings, deliverances, and open door. Shout a powerful hallelujah if you are the one. The passage we read was assuring the people with the testimony of the fact that God is not unrighteous. Not to give the people what is good. That God is not unrighteous to forget their works and their labor of love. God is not unrighteous to forget anybody. He's not. No matter how you think about it. No matter how you feel now. Unless you are the one who has forgotten him. God is not unrighteous to forget you. Tell your neighbor, God is not unrighteous to forget me. Help that person to know that God is not unrighteous to forget him or her. Say it with assurance. God is not unrighteous to forget you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, they see part of it. Hebrews 13, verse 5, they see part of it. The Bible says, For he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. How many of us believe in the word of God? That God will neither leave thee, nor forsake thee. He will knock in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you have not forsaken him, if you have not abandoned him, I want you to shout hallelujah and say, Lord, I have not forsaken you. Lord, do not forsake me. Praise the living Jesus. The writer of Hebrews was assuring them with that testimony. You don't give testimony of what you have not experienced. You don't give testimonies of what you do not know. The writer of Hebrew, St. Luke, was assuring the people. I'm assuring you today that God will never leave you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I met a young man from Germany some time ago. And he saw me where we entered into a shop. He looked at me. He said, you look like a pastor. I said, yes. And then he sat me down and said to me, I used to be a Christian. But from what is happening now, what is happening to me? 
What is happening to my family? I don't think that I have a portion in Christianity. I don't think God knows me, God loves me, God sees me. I said to him, that is not true. God knows you. He sees you. He can't forget you. Your problem is that you are the one that has forgotten him. If you go back to him and call upon him, he will answer you. He will show you and give you testimony that will be evident of the fact that he has not forsaken you. And I told him, in life, nobody will be willing to include you in any good thing until you include yourself. But in the case of the Lord, while you were yet a sinner, Jesus died for you. He has already paid the price. He has already included you. It is now left for you to accept it. There may be someone one here that may be feeling, by reason of what I'm passing through, the Lord has forsaken me. May I assure you, the Lord has not forsaken you. The Lord has not abandoned you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Generally speaking, God wants us to have better things in life. No matter what our position is, no matter what our condition is, no matter the level at which we are, it is the desire of God, it is the will of God for us to have better things in life. Better things ahead of us. In Psalm 34, verse 10. Psalm 34, verse 10. And even Psalm 84, verse 11. Psalm 84, verse 11. The Bible says, He will not withhold anything good from those that seek Him. He will not withhold anything good from them that walk uprightly. You are here this morning because you are seeking Him. You are here this morning because you are walking uprightly. May I announce to you that he will not withhold any good thing from you. I don't know what you desire. I don't know what you have been praying for. But all I know, he's going to meet you, sister. He's going to meet you, brother. At that point of your need, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are always better things ahead. That's why from the days past and the years past, he knew about today. Ahead of today, he knew that he would be here and that he has something better for you. If you are rich already, God wants you to have something better than just being rich by being richer. He wants you. You are rich already, that's good. But he wants you to have something better than just ordinary riches. If you consider the story of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, verse 13 precisely. Genesis 26, verse 13. The Bible says, And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very rich. To be rich is good. But to be very rich is better. No matter your level of comfort, may the Lord give you something better than comfort. Let your amen encourage you. May the Lord give you something better than comfort in Jesus' name. He's always wanting to give us something better. If you are poor, God wants you to have something better than poverty. And the things that are better than poverty are riches and prosperity. 
In Psalm 113, verse 7 to 8. Psalm 113, verse 7 to 8. The Bible says, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. If God does not want to give you better things, he will leave you in the dust. But if you are poor, if you are in need, if you are lacking, and you are in the house this morning, be rest assured by the declaration backed up with the Father in the Lord's prayer this morning, you are going home with something better. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. There is something better ahead. That is why you should not lose hope. That is why you should be expectant. That is why you should be confident. If you are sick, God wants you to have something better than sickness. And that thing is good health. He wants you. Your health is very important to him. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. He says, I am the Lord that he led thee. If he does not want you to have something better than good health, than sickness, he can't give you good health. May I announce to you, if you are barren, God wants you to have something better than barrenness. Barrenness is not good. And that thing that is better than barrenness is fruitfulness. Exodus 23, 26. Exodus 23, 26. The Lord said, They shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land. Nothing. None. So if you are going through barrenness of any kind, I want to let you know that that is not the will of God. And whatever is not the will of God, does not have a place in your life. Whatever is not the will of God does not have a place in your life. <laughs> Lift up your voice and say, whatever is not the will of God does not have a place in my life. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. God is always wanting better things for us ahead. If you are a tenant, God wants you to have something better than just being a tenant and to become a landlord. Hallelujah. We have had the testimonies of our Father in the Lord, many of them, but this man will not be able to say them all. In Jeremiah 29, verse 5, just to assure you that God wants you not to die as a tenant. Jeremiah 29 verse 5, he says, Build ye houses. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. And eat the fruit of them. I didn't see in this passage in the Bible where God said, you will only be a tenant. What he said to me is build ye houses. Build ye houses. If God said we should build houses, why should my own be an exception? You will be a landlord in Jesus' name. I say you will be a landlord in Jesus' name. Better things. Are you single? You are already of a marriageable age. God wants to give you a better status. I said, God wants to give you a better status. He said in Jeremiah 29, verse 6, Jeremiah 29, verse 6, he said, take ye wives. All the single men, take ye wives. Beget sons and daughters. Take ye wives. Take your husbands. Give your daughters unto husbands that they may be sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
What are we saying this morning by this topic? We are saying that better things are ahead for you. And you're receiving them this morning in Jesus' name. How many people will receive it? Shout a better amen. amen. Better things. The word better means that there is something more that is preferred. There is something more that is preferred than what you have, than where you are. And God wants to take you there. That's why you have promotion. That's why you have increase. That's why you prosper. There is always something better that is still preferred to where you are. The writer of Hebrews was saying, he said, we are persuaded. We are persuaded. Better things. We are persuaded. We are convinced. We are sure that better things are coming. Particularly the things that follow salvation. If you are born again, you need not fear. He said, we are convinced. When the scripture is saying that something is sure, know that that thing is true. And it must come to pass. Nothing can stop it. It is true. Nothing can stop it. Amen? Whether you believe it or not, nothing can stop it. Even if your faith cannot carry it, nothing can stop it. As a matter of fact, what God wants to do in your life and in my life, your faith and my faith may not even be able to carry them. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. What are the things that accompany salvation? What are the things that accompany salvation? That are these benefits we are going to receive in this divine encounter this morning. For example, if you are sick, one of the things that accompany salvation is healing. Healing and health. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says, Who his own self by our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. He has taken our sicknesses. He has taken our infirmities. He took them to the cross. We are just not yet coming out from the memory of the celebration of Easter, the resurrection power. He took our sins to the cross. He nailed them there. And by the stripes, he had we were healed. Therefore, anyone that is saved, anyone that have accepted Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, has healing and health following him. Praise the Lord. Some few years back, I was so sick. I went to different hospitals and there was no solution. Did x-ray, they could find nothing. Did all manner of tests, they could find nothing. One of the doctors told me, after examining me, he said, my friend, the complaint you are making, both from your head and your chest and your heart, he said, they are not related we can't find anything wrong with you. Meanwhile, I was dying. My head was as if it was split into two. The upper part was light and the lower part was heavy. When I'm walking, it will be as if paper is on my head. And because paper is light, as I'm walking, I'll be walking with the consciousness of balancing that paper so that it will not fall. That was how the upper head 
was, and the lower one was heavier. Then my chest, the type of fire that was in my chest, in my heart, was such that except I pour ice water on the floor and lie down, I will not be able to sleep. And I remember my problem started when I was still in the university. I was reading in the library and something hits me at my skull, at the back of my neck. And I slumped. I was reading for my degree exam. I had written three papers, remaining two papers to go. And I realized that as I want to look at the book, I can't read. My eyes was rejecting the book. I was sweating in the midst of air condition. I didn't know what to do. I told my neighbor, I said, I don't know what is wrong with me. Please, can you help me? I want to go. And he managed to take me to the hostel. As I got to the hostel, I was uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep. I asked for a sleeping tablet in those days. They call it uh, the a palm. I even took over those and slept off. By the time I woke up in the morning, I said, oh, so I'm still alive. And that was the beginning of my trouble. For one year, for two years, no solution. And somebody told me, he said, this thing is not ordinary. Go to a Bible-believing church. And when they pray for you, it will go. Well, because I was not born again then, I went to a neighboring church because I wanted to be healed. I was doing all what they were doing. I didn't even experience salvation as it were. It was long after that when I got salvation that I knew the difference between when one is saved and when one is going to church only. My problem was not solved. It was the day that I gave my life to Christ in a setting like this that after that day I don't know what happened. I forgot the problem on my head. I forgot the chest, just the heat in my chest. For over two days, I didn't remember it. The very day I remembered it, till today, till today, because of my salvation, I became healed. And I've remained healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Healing is your portion this morning. Healing is your take home this morning. Because it is the thing that accompanies salvation. If you're here, you have not given your life to Christ. Get ready. Because your story will soon change. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The things that accompany salvation, let me just mention it before we pray. For those that are in trouble, the things that accompany salvation that you have is peace of mind. Peace of mind. What the devil stole from us is peace. That's why the world is in trouble. Peace of mind. Peace of mind does not mean that there are no troubles. Does not mean that dollar is not rising. Peace of mind does not mean that rice is costing more than 70,000 a bag. It does not mean that there are no kidnappers. It does not mean that there are no ritual murderers. Peace of mind does not mean that. In the absence of all these, peace of mind is what makes you unshakable, unmovable. Jesus said, in John chapter 16, Verse 32. John 16, 32. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, in this world, you have tribulations. You have troubles. You have problems. But he said, be of good cheer. Because I've overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world for you. And he'll give you peace. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. He said, my peace I give unto you. My peace. Somebody is taking the peace of Jesus. He said, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. 
My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. The peace of the world depends upon one person cheating the other. Even husbands and wives. When you see a wife that is keeping quiet in the house, when the husband is maltreating her or cheating at her, she just keeps quiet. What is she looking for? She doesn't want trouble. So the peace of the world depends on cheating and forgetting. But the peace of Jesus Christ is a peace that passes all understanding. Receive you peace in Jesus' name. And that trouble receive you peace in Jesus' name. The things that accompany salvation is fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. The original intention of the Almighty God from Genesis 28 is that we'll be fruitful. But the devil came to corrupt our fruitfulness. But Jesus, in John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, he said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, he said, you shall be fruitful. All you need is to abide in him. You can only abide in him when you have surrendered to him. When he's your Lord and your personal Savior. When you are saved, you abide in him. The things that accompany salvation. The fifth one, before we begin to pray, is protection and coverage. Protection. From the Holy Ghost service, our Father in the Lord ministered to us unshielded by fire. Protection. That's protection. Shielded by fire. Zechariah 2.5, the scripture you quoted. Zechariah 2.5. He said, for I said the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory of the midst of her. Talking about Jerusalem. You are the Jerusalem of this morning. The Lord will build a wall of fire around you. He will shield you. He will protect you. The two things that God uses to defend, to protect, to cover his people, the two things are, one, fire. Two, glory. Fire and glory. God doesn't protect with weapon, with, with AK-47, with knife, with club, with bomb. No. When he covers you with his fire, nothing can penetrate fire. Nothing. If he covers you with his glory, nothing can go through his glory. Exodus 13, 21. Exodus 13, 21, the Bible says, when he led the children of Israel in the wilderness, in the day, he covered them with glory, cloud of glory, and the enemy could not assess them. In the night, he covered them with fire, and the enemy could not come near them. May glory and fire cover you. May glory and fire cover you. Say better, amen. amen. The things that accompany salvation, there are many, but let me mention this one. And that is what you have in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. It's called contentment. 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 Many of us are too greedy. Many of us want to kill to have something. Greed. We are not contented. We are not. You have a bungalow. You want a duplex. You have a duplex. You are looking for an estate. You have 1,000. You never give your eyes sleep until you have a million. Contentment. The Bible says, Godliness with contentment is of great gain. Great gain. You can't be godly 
until you have given your life to him. Amen. This morning, let's remember that our topic is better things for you. Better things for you. May I announce to you, let it be impossible that you leave this divine encounter arena. The place of miracle. The place of signs and wonders. The place of open door. The place of breakthrough. Let it be impossible that you live here without your own miracle. Rise on your feet. And let's pray. Rise on your feet. If you are expecting to have your own miracle this morning, just want you to shout only three hallelujahs. If you are ready, just shout three hallelujah. One to go. One. Two. Three. Lift up your voice and say, Father. That better thing than what I have. Than where I am. That I need. Deliver to me now. Go ahead and pray. You know yourself. Pray that prayer. That better thing that is, that better thing, that thing that is better than poverty, that thing that is better than loneliness, that thing that is better than singleness, give unto me. I don't want to continue to be single. I want my status to change. I don't want to continue to labor, sweating, nothing to show. Lord, give me something better than barrenness. Give me something better than poverty. Give me something better than loneliness. Give me something better than sickness. Pray, 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 pray. Tell the Lord you don't go empty handed today. Tell the Lord nothing that is better you want him to do for you. Are you a tenant? The landlord is troubling you. Are you of marriageable age? You want a change of status? upon him, he hears you. Don't be weary. Don't look left and right. Concentrate. Receive your own. Your testimony is what you are waiting for. Better things for me, Lord. Better situation. Better health.
In Jesus' name we pray. Second to the last prayer. Say, Father, everything that accompanies salvation that is written today, let me have them in fullness. Everything that accompanies salvation, prosperity, peace, victory, let me have them. Let me have them. Let me have them. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray and say, Father. Father. Please don't allow me to forsake you. Please don't allow me to abandon you in my business, in my prosperity, in my family. Don't allow me to forget you. Don't allow me, Lord. Don't allow me to abandon you. Don't abandon me. Pray, pray, pray that prayer. In the prosperity that is coming, don't allow me to forget you, Lord. Don't allow me not to serve you. Don't allow me not to spend for you and be spent. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. May I finally say. Your situation and life. Can never be better. Unless you hand them over. To the Lord himself. Your situation can never be better. It can never be better unless you hand that situation and your life to the Lord Jesus. I did it. For over 35 years or 40 years now, I've never been the same again. You will battle and struggling for too long. Your struggle will be for too long. Your battle will be for too long if you fail to surrender your life to Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. Your battle will be long. I don't want to fight a long battle in life. I don't want to fight it. If you're here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus and you make up your mind this morning to surrender your problems and your life to him, Please just come forward. I want to pray for you. By the backing of our Father in the Lord. Just come forward. At the count of seven. Those that want to give their life to Jesus. That want to surrender to him. Please come forward. One. Please just hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We don't have much time. Two. Please, please hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Three. Yes, run up, come, come, come forward. So that your battle in life will not be for too long. So that your problem in life will not be for too long. Come and hand over. Let Jesus Christ carry them all. Let him take over. 
Just go ahead and clap for them. Please hurry up. Hurry up, please. Hurry up, please, because we are short of time. Better things are coming. Today you are entering into a better thing, something better. Something better. As you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, your problems will surrender to you. Four. Five. When the better things will be coming to you, you will not give it to me. You are the one that will have it. Five. Six. Please, those of you in front, as you just close your eyes, I want you to begin to talk to the Lord. I said, Lord Jesus, I have come to you to surrender my life to you. I am sorry. I've been going my own way, managing my own life. I've sinned against you. I sin against my fellow men. Have mercy upon me. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Pray, 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 pray. He will hear you. Ask him to have mercy. Only those that ask for mercy that will receive mercy. If you don't ask for mercy, trouble will be there waiting for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. These ones have heard your word. They have come unto you. You say, whosoever will come unto you, you will in no wise cast out. Receive them, O Lord. Have mercy upon them. Forgive their sins. Wipe them away with your blood. Write their names in the book of life. That beginning from today, the power to go and sin no more. The power to go and live for you. The power to go to enjoy the things that accompany salvation. Grant unto them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. For those of us that are in front that have given their life to Christ, please the counselors will be talking with you. They will need, our Father in the Lord will need your names and your prayer requests. Please just follow the counselors and then give these details and our Father in the Lord will be praying for you. And the miracles will begin to experience them. Please, can you go with them? Please, ushers, help them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we rise? Are we blessed this morning? Are we truly blessed this morning? It is time to give an offering unto the Lord. It's time to appreciate him. What you give will only leave your hand, but it can never leave your life. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. He said, give, and you shall receive something better. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. And running over. Shall men be caused to give unto your bosom. So this morning we are going to exchange that little money in our hands. That thing we have for something better. Are we ready? Are we ready? Over to your choir. Over to your band. Let's dance and go to the nearest basket and drop our offering. Hallelujah. 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 Then we'll pray for us and when we'll go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Everybody say. Be enough. 
thank you whatever we have assurance about in your world must come to pass this morning you have assured us of better things for us Lord we are asking even as we have delivered these better things by the time we get home by the time we get to our offices by the time we leave this auditorium May we experience them all in the name of Jesus. Lord, the blessings of this morning divine encounter. Nothing shall reverse them in Jesus' name. Much more than we have asked for. Give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, behold our offering. By the fire of your acceptance, receive this offering in the name of Jesus. Let this offering be an open door offering. An offering of connection to better finances. An offering for connection to better breakthrough. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Use this offering. Sanctify them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah and say, I am going with something better.